AIs playing against each other is not a groundbreaking new idea. A researcher at IBM used the technique to train a neural net to reach world-class performance in backgammon back in 1992. Still, the idea holds as much promise now as it has back then. We're gonna learn how it works, what's so magical about it, and even train our own tic-tac-toe agent by playing against itself in Unity's ML agents. According to my statistics, you watching right now probably have found me through a YouTube search and are not subscribed. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. Thanks. If you learn to play a game, the opponents you play against heavily influence how well you learn. Always playing chess against your five-year-old brother will probably do little to improve your or his game. On the other hand, playing against the world champion probably also won't help you much if they are bringing their A game. The question then is, what's the ideal opponent? Thinking about our tic-tac-toe AI, we could let it train against one that just picks randomly or one we hard-coded using classical algorithms. The one that picks randomly is pretty much equal to the little brother example and the one hard-coded more or less equal to the world champion example. Both options are not ideal. For optimal learning, we need something that always matches the skill level of our agent. Who could do that? The answer is pretty obvious. It's our agent itself. Of course, the skill set of our agent is equal to the skill set of our agent. It's the perfect opponent. But there are a few problems that arise in this kind of setup. First, overfitting against certain strategies or play styles. If it's always playing against itself, it will only learn strategies that work against one particular play style. Second, unstable training. From the perspective of an agent, the adversarial agent is as much part of the environment as everything else. This can make learning much more challenging as the environment is always changing. Having some degree of consistency would help. Let's see how self-play in ML agents work to get a grip on how they tackled those problems. We have two agents of opposing factions. In a symmetric game like chess, go or tic-tac-toe, these agents share the same policy because they are essentially solving the same problem. Let's give our two agents a copy of that policy. Of course, as the policy is the brain of the agent, it changes over time as the agents are learning. Let's simulate that and take a few steps, basically moving forward in time. After reaching a certain step count, we take a snapshot of the policy. We only keep a certain window of policies, so step one is discarding the oldest policy. After taking a few more steps, we again throw out the oldest snapshot of a past policy and copy the current one. The size of the snapshot window is defined by us. In this case, it is four. We could also change it to five or even one. It describes the number of policy snapshots we keep at all time and is usually between five to 30. As you can imagine, we can also define how often the snapshotting should take place. In our example, safe steps was set to eight. If we were to half the number, we would double the frequency of snapshotting. Of course, in reality, the number is much larger to really capture a diverse set of policies, usually between 10,000 to 100,000 steps. It is important to know which kind of step this is referring to, because not all steps are created equal. Safe steps is referring to trainer steps. The trainer steps are counted for each agent that is actively trained. Meaning, each time an environment step is taken, the trainer steps are increased by the number of learning agents in your scene. Okay, let's get back to our two agents. If we take a look at training, we have our two agents and a collection of snapshots. One team of agents is always playing with a fixed policy, meaning it isn't learning and the other team is learning. This fixed policy is taken from past snapshots. With the chance defined by the play against latest model ratio, either the last model in our snapshot stack or a random one is chosen. 
Usually it's set to 0.5, so it's a 50-50 chance. The swapping to a different snapshot occurs with the frequency set in swap steps. The genius thing behind snapshotting different policies is that they may capture different playstyles and strategies, and by swapping them out from time to time, the agent isn't able to overfit to a specific one. Additionally, it introduces some consistency the agent can learn as the fixed policy changes more infrequently than the active one, leading to a more stable training. This time the steps, swap steps are referring to, are not trainer steps, but ghost trainer steps. The agents in the fixed policy team are managed by the ghost trainer. And each environment step, the ghost steps are increased by the number of agents trained by the ghost trainer. So what's the difference to trainer steps? Well, as long as the teams are equally sized, there is none. But if you are going with a two versus one setup, for example, it's something you should be aware of. Just remember, swap steps are only relevant for the team with the fixed policy. So it's referring to ghost steps. Let's go back to our agents. Currently, the blue agents are learning and the red agents are just executing a past snapshot without modifying it. With a certain frequency, the teams change and now the red team is learning. How often does this change occur? Well, of course, you decide. It makes sense to make this some multiple of safe steps, somewhere between four to 10 times the safe steps. You might be wondering which steps these steps are referring to. As they are multiple of safe steps, they are also referring to trainer steps. Amazingly, we have not only understood how self-play works in ML agents, but all the self-play related hyperparameters as well. If some of that was a bit confusing, don't worry. The key thing to remember is that the agents are split into teams where one team is learning and adapting and the other team isn't, but instead just executing past versions of the agent to make it robust against a large variety of opponents and provide a more stable learning environment. That's it. Let's jump into Unity and I'll show you what I have created. If I press play, I can play against a tic-tac-toe AI trained for a few hours, playing against itself. It's playing very good, but not perfect. Funny enough, it is actually quite a nice difficulty to play against, as you can sometimes find a way to trick it, but if you mess something up, you get punished immediately. If you want to check out this AI for yourself, just go to the link in the description, you can find the whole project as you see here on GitHub. While you are there, make sure to leave a star if you find it useful. If you have any problems with running the project or need any help with ML agents in general, check out the ML agents discord I have created. I hope you all check it out. It really could be a great way for us all to help each other out. Link is in the description. Okay, let's check out the tic-tac-toe agent script. You can see it is very simple. The agent receives information about the state of each field in a one-hot encoded fashion. As each field can have three different states, we have 27 different states in total. And in this encoding style, each state is binary encoded, either being a 1 or a 0. The agent has a discrete action space with a size of 9, one for each field. The cool thing with discrete actions is that we can mask them. So in this case, masking the fields that are already taken and thereby limiting the options the agent has. It's just a bit less to learn. All in all, the whole thing really is quite simple. The only tricky part for me was the rewards. As you might imagine, I first tried a plus one reward for winning and a minus one reward for losing. But for me, this really didn't work out. The agent somehow optimized towards not getting a draw against the opponent. So most of the time, either losing or winning. This really wasn't great as a draw should be the most common result if two decent players face off. I tried many different things, but in the end, adding a minus 0.25 reward for the starting player and a 0.75 reward for the non-starting player on a draw led to pretty good results. The intuition behind this is that 
if an agent draws, even though he went second, it is almost as good as winning in such a short game. I still think the simple rewards could work, but they may require more training time. To be honest, I'm not quite sure. If you have any ideas about that, let me know. Everything we have seen so far was the usual ML agent stuff. Nothing to do with self-play. So how do we turn on self-play? It's really quite easy. If you check out the scene, we have two agents for each tic-tac-toe field. It is important that the behavior name on both agents is the same if you want them to share a policy. The only difference from the ML agent side of things is that the one agent has a team ID of 0 and the other of 1. This is enough to differentiate the two. Now, if we go over to our trainer config file, also located in the project, we can see the self-play parameters we have discussed before. They should make sense to you now. In this case, the values are unusually small because it's such a simple game. This is all we need to set to enable self-play in an ML agent's project. In my experience, you should definitely expect longer training times than usual, but I would say the results make up for that. That's it for today. If you have enjoyed, I have a Patreon page and I would be very grateful if you support me on there. I'm really trying to create the best content I can and I hope it's useful to you. My dream would be to make a living of this, so if you want to support me in that pursuit, Patreon is the way to go. Thanks to all my current Patreon supporters, Todd Fine, Patrick Larsen, Jacques Joubert, Drakeling Labs, Russ and Victor Bezak. Trust me when I say I appreciate it. Have a great day. Peace. Peace.